بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اهلا وسهلا بحضراتكم في فعاليات اليوم الثاني للمؤتمر الدولي الرابع لنوزجة الجزائيه والاطياف في الواقع النهارده عندنا في الجلسه الصباحيه محاضرتين ثم ثلاث ثلاث مشاركات اورال طبعا بنرحب باستاذتنا واستاذه الجيل الاستاذه الدكتوره لطفيه النادي استاذه الاساتذه مؤسسه المعهد القومي لعلوم الليزر وواحده من يعني عظماء الفيزياء مش في مصر فقط لا في العالم العربي وزميلنا العزيز مصطفى سيولاك من تركيا هو ومجموعته البحثيه هيقدموا طرق حديثه في استخدام النانو تكنولوجي للتعامل مع بعض العينات سواء كانت بيئيه او غذائيه لتعيين التريس ميتلز ليتس سويتش باك تو انجلش اند اي وود لايك تو ويلكم اول اوف يو ان دي فورس انترناشونال كونفرنس اون مولوكولار موديلنج اند سبيكروسكوبي It gives me great pleasure to present my professor, uh, Professor Dr. Lutfiya Nadi. She is one of the greatest professors in the field of physics, not only in Egypt, but also in uh, Arabic world. And uh, she was uh, uh, the founder of the uh, National Institute of Laser in Cairo University. And uh, uh, really, she is uh, one of our symbols in the field of physics. And uh, I, I'm really happy to introduce her in a, in a lecture entitled laser induced fluorescence and then we have uh, another lecture for uh, our brother professor dr mustafa soilak from rgs university faculty of science chemistry department from kaysari turkey he's going to present metal organic framework and their nanocomposites in solid phase extraction studies actually professor soilak and his co-workers are uh, uh, the group uh, with uh, a big efforts and big inputs in the field of liquid-liquid uh, uh, uh, extraction, solid phase extraction, and the pre-concentration of environmental samples to be able to measure uh, these samples and uh, measure uh, trace metals and very fancy trace uh, with uh, uh, good, uh, what we call the limit of detection and good accuracy as they make uh, some comparison with the certified reference material. I'm really happy to present him and uh, present three talks followed by his uh, lecture to indicate different efforts by the group to make solid phase extraction. I'm sure that we are going to get some benefits and some, uh, some good discussion with our colleagues and our great professors. And let's postpone the discussion to the end of this session. Uh, so, uh, please, Dr. Hens, start the first speaker, Professor Nadia, and then Professor Solek, and then uh, three colleagues from Turkey. Let's start our session. Allah uh, barakatullah. Inshallah, Naharda Hanebda Mabad presentation, the online presentation, Nishtaraki Motabar. بس قبل ما نبدا احب اديكم فكره عن لطفيه النادي في العشر سنين تقريبا اللي فاتوا دول ف سنه 2008 انا زرت كوريا الجنوبيه ومعهد كايست وده عشان كنت ابتديت اهتماماتي بالهاي باور ليزرز وقلت ان انا يعني في الزياره دي الحقيقه عملنا اتفاقيات كويسه وكملنا الحمد لله اتفاقيات مع المعهد القومي لعلوم الليزر في جامعه القاهره سنه 2009 حصلت على جائزه الدوله التقديريه في مجال العلوم الأساسية التكنولوجيا المتقدمة. I think I have to speak in English. Uh, during 2013, I went to visit uh, uh, South Korea uh, at Gwangju Ultra Intense Laser Laboratory, and this is uh, my photo with Professor. Uh, Uh, Nam uh, in the big uh, target room behind us where uh, the interaction of high power laser takes place. In 2013, I was awarded uh, the trophy emblem of the Republic of India at Aligarh Muslim University. Uh, where I've been uh, uh, honored to 
to have this emblem, which is the uh, highest, uh, highest, uh, what to say, highest honor from uh, India, and uh, the president of the Aligarh Muslim University uh, is seen here handling me this uh, honor. In 2015, uh, there was the graduation of the uh, students at uh, Faculty of Science, Cairo University, where uh, the uh, president of Cairo University uh, declared that uh, the that two uh, uh, graduates uh, for 2013 and 2013 uh, will be named uh, the, on my name, that my, my name is given to these two, uh, two years. And this is a great uh, important honor I got from Cairo University. Uh, as you see, uh, I am here wearing the, uh, the Wissam, Wissam al-Dawla lil-Uloom wal funun min al-Daraga al which I was uh, uh, uh, given from the president of uh, Egypt on the year 2013. On 2018, I had the honor to be elected uh, internationally uh, to be a member of the International Committee of Ultra Intense Lasers, uh, ICUIL. Uh, for Egypt, representing Egypt and all North African countries. And uh, in this uh, slide is uh, seen the Dean of the Faculty of Science, uh, Professor uh, al Minawi, uh, is handing me uh, a shield of Cairo University, uh, donated me this uh, as an honor to have been elected in this important international committee. In October 2018, I, has, uh, I had the honor to be awarded the shield of the Arab Conference on Astronomy and Geophysics uh, Sixth Assembly uh, due to my uh, interaction with the, uh, with the Arab uh, uh, Astronomy and Geophysics uh, Institute in Cairo. Uh, this was also a great honor. It's uh, been given to me by the uh, president of the of honor uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia. 2019 was my first uh, uh, uh, presentation at the inter first international conference on molecular monitoring and spectroscopy, which is now is the fourth uh, international conference on molecular monitoring and spectroscopy. And I got uh, the best uh, presentation uh, uh, during this conference. i uh, seen uh, the head of this uh, International Conference was uh, Professor uh, Professor Hanan Al Hayes and uh, Professor uh, uh, Abdul Professor Abdul uh, In March 2019, I was awarded. Uh, the uh, honor from uh, uh, combined from the uh, uh, the Egyptian women uh, uh, uh, Egyptian women as the best Egyptian women of uh, scientific uh, uh, sector. And here is seen uh, me taking the uh, the honor from Professor uh, <coughs> Zakhari, Nadia Zakhari, the ex-president of research 
and uh, Professor El Meligi, who was the uh, head of the Egyptian uh, of the Egyptian who uh, Rais. رئيس البحث العلمي نقابة البحث العلمي في مصر and this is a second picture with all the ladies present coming to celebrate this occasion with me and we can see some of them well-known uh, ladies, uh, professors, like Professor Suhair Negm. So today we are going to discuss what is meant by laser-induced fluorescence. Uh, this, uh, this paper is given by me, Lotfi al Naji. Uh, from the Physics Department, Faculty of Science, Cairo University. Uh, and uh, also I am a member at the National Institute of Laser Enhanced Sciences at Cairo University. What is meant by laser-induced fluorescence? Laser-induced fluorescence is an optical spectroscopic technique where a sample is excited with a laser, and the fluorescence emitted by the sample is subsequently captured by a photodetector. Laser-induced fluorescence can be understood as a class of fluorescence spectroscopy where the usual lamp excitation is replaced by a laser source. Whilst lasers are now routinely used as excitation sources in photoluminescence spectrometers, laser-induced fluorescence was not originally developed uh, for a commercial instrument, but as a stand-alone laser spectroscopy technique. Uh, we are going to just get uh, an idea about uh, a brief idea about the history of the laser induced fluorescence. A laser induced spectroscopy was first developed by Richard Zarr in 1968 for the detection of atoms and molecules in the gas phase. Uh, its potential as an analytical technique was quickly realized as the fluorescence intensity is directly proportional to the concentration of the analyte in the linear power and concentration regime. Laser-induced fluorescence offers interesting advantages over absorption uh, spectroscopy. Uh, it has a zero background. It has higher selectivity towards the analyte. It gives information about the rotational vibrational structure of the ground or excited state of the sample, and the time-resolved information if using pulsed lasers. In addition, uh, polarization-dependent measurements are easy to, uh, to detect. Uh, the brief history of laser-induced fluorescence, uh, one of the most applications of laser-induced spectroscopy was measuring the temperature of gas phase samples. And today it is widely used for the analysis of flames. Uh, second, the technique soon moved beyond gas samples and into the liquid phase as it became a detection technique in liquid chromatography and capillary electrophoresis. That is CE uh, LIF. Now, uh, we can say that the, the types of laser induced fluorescence are 
simply uh, considered as uh, uh, used to ensure the induced fluorescence spectroscopy depending on the laser and detection system used. It is common to refer to the technique as excitation or emission, laser-induced spectroscopy. Figure 1 illustrates this concept. In the figure, a laser is employed to excite the molecules from their brown state into an electronically excited state. As the molecule relaxed back into the ground state, fluorescence is detected by a photomultiplier tube. In excitation laser-induced fluorescence, the excitation wavelength is varied using a tunable laser, which allows one to resolve the vibrational structure of the excited state. In a liquid sample, the molecules will fluoresce from the lowest vibrational level to their excited single state, decaying to a series of vibrational levels in the ground state. However, the emission spectrum is not resolved by the detection system. A band pass filter is placed between the sample and the photomultiplier tube to detect all the emission from the sample whilst removing any scattered radiation. In emission laser induced fluorescent, a fixed pump wavelength is used to excite the sample and the sample's emission spectrum is analyzed utilizing monochromator to select the detection wavelength. The figure shows single point detection with a photomultiplier tube, but it is also possible to employ an array uh, of, the, of detectors, uh, CCG or CMOS, to capture the full spectrum of the one shot. As you see here in this uh, figure, uh, we see on, on, the, on this side, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, the excitation uh, uh, spectrum, which is a multi-line spectrum or a multi-wide-band wide spectrum. This is uh, formed from a, a tunable uh, ultrafast laser. And then it is uh, uh, reflected uh, perpendicularly to pass through the sample, and the sample emits uh, on the 90 degrees direction is situated the uh, detection system. It is also possible to classify laser-induced fluorescence into continuous wave or time resolved laser-induced fluorescence. Like in this case, the, we measure the spectrum emitted after excitation uh, in nanoseconds, zero nanosecond, uh, 100 nanosecond, 200 nanosecond, until 400 nanosecond. And as you see, the intensity goes down, but the, out, the, the spectrum uh, wavelength or the half wavelength is uh, clearly uh, constant. It is between uh, 550, uh, 575 uh, till uh, 675. Uh, so this is the laser induced fluorescence from uh, Rotinia uh, PBY3 chlorine 2 acquired in an LP980 with an ICCD detector at different times after the pump pulse indicated in the graph. Uh, uh, the uh, lambda pump is 450 nanometers and uh, the pump energy was 10 millijoule. The gate width was 100 nanoseconds. Uh, Edinburgh Instruments uh, made a nice uh, system 
to, uh, uh, instruments made a nice system to solve uh, or, or detect uh, laser induced fluorescence. Uh, Edinburgh Instruments incorporates lasers into photoluminescence spectrometry such as the FLS1000 and the FS5, allowing both CW and time resolved laser uh, induced fluorescence. Uh, pulsed Neugemium Yang laser, which are popular laser induced excitation sources, can be integrated with the FLS-1000 and the LP-980 spectrometers. In particular, the LP-980 uh, transient absorption spectrometer has been specifically designed for use with these sources, and it can be configured with a holder specific for laser-induced spectroscopy. In this configuration, figure three, uh, we show the probe lamp is blocked by a shutter controlled by a software as, as it is not re required for laser induced fluorescence, while the pump beam is directed to the sample which sight closed closely the collection optics for the maximum laser induced fluorescence state. The laser induced fluorescence configuration in the LP900 H spectrometer maximizes the signal. As you see, here is the uh, pump and the detection. As you see, this is the probe. And this is the sample chamber. Here is the sample. It is excited. It emits uh, the fluorescence. The fluorescence is uh, uh, detected by uh, this detector here and this detector there. And, and as you see, this is the proof for to, to measure the laser fluorescence. And this is the uh, this shows the uh, excitation beam, and this shows the uh, emitted laser fluorescence spectrum. The fluorescence of dye molecules by laser two photon excitation to image biological cells. Here in this uh, research, project, research paper, we uh, and uh, Professor Ahmed Farag and Professor Yusuf Agamel, uh, Professor Ahmed Farag is a professor of chemistry and Professor Yusuf Gamal is a theoretician. And uh, we uh, combined our efforts to, do, to try to study the fluorescence of dye molecules uh, by two photon excitation and then to utilize this into imaging biological cells. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, we can just introduce what we did. Uh, this is the abstract of the work. In order to image biological cells, one has to combine them with compounds that emit visible fluorescence. Such compounds could only fluoresce on absorbing strong ultraviolet radiation. The ultraviolet radiation would uh, excite, uh, excite the, the levels of the, of the biological cells, but it will damage the biological cell. In order to overcome this, uh, we came to an idea. The idea was we decided to prepare compounds that combine with protein that exist in any biological cell at the same time absorb two photons in the infrared range instead of uh, exciting with, uh, uh, with visible or ultraviolet laser. We uh, use two infrared range forming the ultraviolet radiation needed for fluorescence and avoiding the damage of the cell. Maybe the following will follow fluorescence compounds will show. We manufactured three types of fluorescing compounds 
given the name uh, Lotfia 1, Lotfia 2, and Lotfia 3 with high affinity uh, to combine with protein molecules. Uh, we prepared, was prepared by our group uh, with uh, Professor Ahmad uh, Farag as a supervisor here. When subjected to ultraviolet radiation ranging from 370, 360, 366 nanometer, respectively, they fluoresce in the visible range, peaking at 486. 430 and 470 nanometer for L1, L2, and L3, respectively. They have high affinity for two photon absorption of the infrared laser of wavelength 730 plus or minus 10, providing the UV radiation 360. Of course, we multiply 730 by 2. Uh, and then we, we, we, we, we get only the 730 uh, to fluoresce. Eh? Uh, and we shall simply explain how we did the, uh, how we think of the idea. So we had, instead of uh, the sample absorbing uh, one photon, it will, would uh, absorb two photon absorption. Uh, two photon absorption cross section using the near infrared uh, femtosecond laser for the three fluorescing compounds at different concentrations in the GMF. The highest fluorescence yield indicated the highest two photon absorption. So what we did uh, actually, the imaging of the fluorescence is then carried out by fixing the sample on Thorlab piezo controlled XYZ flexure system provided by 45 degrees mounting stage. It has high resolution motion of pitch sensitivity better than 100 nanometer and the motion span from 100 nanometer to uh, 200 millimeter. The focused laser beam was tightly focused and bombarded the sample at 445 uh, degrees. The fluorescence intensity was imaged by a CCD camera for each pitch position and the motion span and recorded by a video uh, system giving rise to the biological image. Uh, so we can simply uh, uh, demonstrate the multi-photon microscopy. Uh, we prepare the dye that can combine two pro proteins in biological samples and that absorb photons in the ultraviolet and fluoresce at the visible range. Uh, we use ultra-fast lasers to deliver high intensity at the focused beam on the sample of average low energy in the near infrared, uh, near infrared range. Provide uh, the condition in two is suitable to absorb two near infrared photons by the dye, providing the UV photons needed in one but excite the dye, then emit fluorescence from the tiny focal volume. The microscopy of the emitted fluorescence without the need for confocal pinhole imaging, eliminating out of focus imaging, as well as damaging the dyes in the biological material due to low absorption and low scattering probability of the near infrared photons. What is my, uh, meant by two photon absorption? Now we are going to uh, demonstrate a single photon and a two photon. The ground state is excited to a, a higher excited state by uh, a UV radiation, 
uh, with an energy HC over lambda 1. And then the excited state will decay or fluoresce to a fluorescence level. And the fluorescence level will uh, give the visible uh, the radiation in the visible range. Of course, as we said, uh, the ultraviolet radiation would damage uh, the biological cells. What we did is that we, we, we can uh, use, utilize uh, fluorescence, so we, we utilize a laser with HC over lambda 1 by 2, as we shall see now. This is what is meant by two photon absorption. We have this is the this is the ground state, and this is the virtual state, and this is the fluorescent state that would uh, that we have excited before by the ultraviolet radiation, and uh, now we excited by two infrared radiation, which were added through the virtual state to give exactly the same energy uh, for, uh, for the excited state. And this excited state would go to the fluorescent uh, level, fluorescent state, which will emit uh, fluorescent light in the visible range. So instead of just one, uh, one wavelength, we, we got two uh, photons uh, added together uh, so, so that we get the same excited state. So, by this we we uh, avoided that the uh, that the uh, biological cell will be damaged. So we had a quartz cell filled with L1 uh, in GMF and subjected to the near infrared laser from the pulses of course if we if the air, there is uh, no emission except the near infrared we shall see nothing but if two uh, photons will be absorbed to excite the ultraviolet level we shall see fluorescence we shall see fluorescence in this uh, cell in this quartz cell and as you see, we have here the uh, near infrared, uh, which we, from which we shall take these two pulses, will excite the, the dye, and the dye will fluoresce in the visible range, as you, as you see here. This is what we uh, really got. And now we shall discuss how we can do that, uh, how we can image uh, a biological cell. So the fluorescence of L1 in the visible range 4035 approves the two photon uh, absorption has occurred. Uh, now we just going to give you the transition probability for the two photon absorption. We did uh, measure that and we calculated that uh, for L1, the cross-section for our samples could be calculated. And this fact has given us the value for the, uh, for the dyes L1 and L2. And we, uh, uh, uh, we change the, incident uh, femtosecond laser power uh, and as you see it is for L1 and for L2 and we use the rhodamine uh, B uh, to control uh, as a standard for the two photon absorption and as you see it is uh, so linear and so uh, and it gets uh, quite uh, a signal <coughs> signal to uh, to background radiation. <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
the step for imaging uh, starts as follows. We have the femtosecond laser. And the femtosecond laser is uh, focused by a focal length, uh, by a lens, sorry. And uh, it uh, bombards the piezo stage of a scanner. Piezo stage of a scanner on which we, we place our sample of a biological cell. Uh, and uh, the, the piezo sc stage scanner can move in four directions. And uh, this is being controlled by the flexural system in the figure as you see here. <coughs> Now, what happens to, to this uh, uh, laser uh, photons when they bombard the, uh, our sample? It, it is either part that is reflected uh, that goes directly and some part will be absorbed by the biological sample on this stage and will emit radiation from the biological sample. Now, this uh, part is a control to control uh, the amount of fast uh, femtosecond laser, and this uh, this rays uh, this uh, uh, rays uh, comes from the biological sample. Uh, we we this is a monitor. We consider as the monitor if any changes are occurring in the fast uh, femtosecond laser. Then we have an objective lens and uh, a tube lens uh, with a slit and uh, a reflector. Uh, uh, this reflector uh, tilting uh, the partial mirror is, is a tilting partial mirror actually to uh, to reflect the radiation from the biological cell onto a, a comos camera to uh, and then of course uh, we record that on a video monitor and uh, uh, we have here a setup for uh, control of the uh, uh, imaging with an avalanche photodiode. We uh, got a protein rich with the castor oil seed doped with the, with the dye which we prepared L2. And as you see, it uh, shows us the castor oil seed <coughs> all over the sample. This is the figure of the, of the sample on the uh, piezo, uh, piezo uh, uh, slide. Uh, conclusion, we have uh, two photon absorption perforations is a threshold process for the three fluorophores which we prepare with saturation ranging uh, re region starting at 100, 160 and four, 240 milliwatt incident, uh, 80 femtosecond laser uh, of wavelength 730 uh, for the L1 and L2 uh, and L3 flew fours respectively. Uh, background level rises from solvent molecules and other impurities is negligible compared to the typical fluorescence from a fluorescence signal from the uh, from the molecules on the uh, uh, scanning uh, uh, on the scanning uh, uh, system and uh, the emitted uh, two photon absorption cross section of the three fluorophores uh, are up to uh, 10 to 39 
11, 10 to 39, and 6, uh, to 10 to 39 for the uh, dyes L1 and L2. And higher than that, uh, standard rhodamine uh, B of, uh, of known TPA cross section. Uh, the synthesized uh, pyridine and comarine derivatives, BU4s, are promising structure for two photon absorption spectroscopy. Uh, the advantages, or advantages of the two photon absorption spectroscopy, photo bleaching is restricted to the focal volume, and no one photon absorption occurs simultaneously. Second, the radiation damage is reduced since the average energy absorbed per volume from the near infrared photons are smaller than in the ultraviolet scanning, uh, scanning microscope. The penetration depth of the near infrared laser radiation is larger compared to that of ultraviolet light allowing thick sample imaging. The femtosecond pulses are having shorter duration yields uh, the maximum uh, needed photon for the two photon absorption with minimum pulse energy. This is uh, uh, also a high resolution image of a tubulin network in epithelial cells. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that uh, I have uh, made it clear for you that uh, two photon absorption is one of the important uh, one of the important techniques to image biological cells. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, I'm very happy to be again with all of my Egyptian friends and all other my friends uh, listening to this uh, speech from different countries. Uh, I want to start with some thanks, uh, especially thanks to organizing committee of these conferences. And also, uh, I want to thank my uh, brother, Dr. Mitat Ibrahim, and uh, I want to thank my daughter, Dr. Hanna, for their kind invitation. Inshallah, next times, inshallah, next year, I want to be with you at Cairo, at Egypt, face to face. Uh, this is a high quality conference with different kinds of spectroscopy, chemistry, physics, and sciences, other sciences, and I want to be very happy a part of this conference. Uh, today, I want to give a speech about my new works, especially on metal organic frameworks for their usage in salt phase extraction and salt phase micro extraction. Uh, I want to uh, start, uh, you know that traces organic and inorganic pollutants in the environment is a big problem for human beings. Uh, some organic contaminants in environment, environment uh, 
from personal care products, from pharmaceuticals, from dyes, from microbial pollutants, from pesticides and others are a big problem for our healthy life. Especially they, they are uh, pollutants uh, for water sources, soil and air. And also they have both of organic and inorganic pollutants, maybe sources to some uh, health problem in uh, human, uh, for example, hypertension, memory disruption, reduced IQ, uh, cardiovascular disorders, anemia, anemia and others and others. And also my main subject is especially heavy metals and also heavy metals at trace levels in the environment, environment is also big problem. For example, their toxicology is big problem. For example, uh, lead, lead two especially, sources to cancer, renal kidney disease, diases, anemia, ner nervous system damage, and mental uh, problems. Also, uh, high levels of chromium, headache, diarrhea, and uh, carcinogenic uh, problems, especially uh, chromium-6. We can also give a lot of examples their problems in human and uh, environment, including uh, animals and uh, plants. But I don't want to too much talk about these points, but due to their uh, big problems, organic and inorganic pollutants at trace levels, their determination is uh, very important in environmental samples. But in their determination, uh, before determination steps by instrumental analytical techniques, generally sample preparation techniques are very necessity because of uh, two important problems in the detection of instrumental detection of these uh, analytes. What is the, the problems in the instrumental detection of trace analytes in the sa real samples? And why is sample preparation is necessary before detection? This is uh, my uh, main subject in my scientific life. Uh, two important problems we have. The concentration of our analytes is sometimes or many times lower than the detection limits of instruments. And second problem is uh, matrix effects of con con uh, constituents of real samples. These two problems could be solved by using sample preparation techniques, especially here we are using some extraction techniques, including separation and preconcentration. Uh, also, this uh, treatment evaporation cleanup is another important part of sample preparation techniques. And generally, analytical chemists 
use that uh, these techniques uh, prior to instrumental detection of uh, trace analysis and salt phase extraction and salt phase micro extraction techniques are widely used for these purposes. Various types of uh, salt phase extraction techniques could be, as shown in this uh, slide, cologne techniques could be used, and also batch techniques could be used, two different kinds of salt phase extraction techniques. The main uh, point of uh, salt phase extraction techniques when your analytes adsorbed on the surface of new uh, adsorbents you prepared, but the components of real samples which are sourced to matrix effects removed uh, from the column. After this step, these adsorption steps, Second steps is coming, the sec main second step is coming. We call that this step is elution. Elution means that the uh, separate your analytes, the separate your analytes from the adsorbent by using a suitable elution solvents. This is the timeline of uh, solid phase extraction and solid phase macro extraction techniques. At the uh, 1950s, uh, sometimes 1.5 kilogram analytes used for these purposes, but nowadays we are using only milligram, milligram label adsorbents from 1.5 kilogram adsorbents to 10 milligram of adsorbents. And at the beginning, uh, some conventional silica adsorbents activated carbons, natural adsorbents uh, was used, but nowadays, nowadays, generally nanosorbents and nanocomposites are used for these purposes. Here you can see some uh, attractive adsorbents, including uh, graphene, nanotubes, uh, metal organic frameworks, covalent organic frameworks, and others and others, which are at nano uh, solvents. Uh, only 10 to 50 milligram adsorbents enough for these kinds of studies for salt phase micro extraction of your analytes. And also again here, uh, you can see some different uh, adsorbents for these purposes, including graphene, graphene oxide, carbon nanotubes, and others. Especially today, I will talk to uh, metal organic frameworks, but before to talk uh, metal organic frameworks, I also give some examples for other adsorbents. Uh, why, uh, how we can uh, synthesize uh, nanoparticles? Different methodology is possible. Uh, this is one of them is from bottom to up, from atom or molecules to nanoparticles or uh, from top to down, uh, bulk materials from to bulk materials from bulk materials to nanoparticles and different kinds of methodology uh, we can use for these purposes. 
vapor deposition, sol gel processes, bioreductions, and here the thermal razel ablation, explosion process, and others. Uh, in our procedures, generally we use uh, sol gel processes and uh, hydrothermal synthesis. And also, why these kinds of studies are suitable for uh, our uh, works, uh, benefits of nanoadsorbents, they are sustainable, uh, quick, easy scale up, magnetic separation is possible, high efficiency, they are easy, selective, and green method. You know that green chemistry, green methodology is very important in uh, our life at these days. And also uh, benefits of uh, nanoadsorbents, including carbon nanotubes, uh, metal organic frameworks and others and others, multifunctional, high porosity, high tonability, highly stable, reusable, small size, high adsorption and others, uh, they have other characteristics they have. At the beginning, I want to talk some uh, points about carbon nanotubes, uh, especially chemists and physics and other scientists know that carbon nanotubes are very important materials and also uh, they have some good properties. They are nano-sized, large surface to volume ratio, water solubility, mechanical citrate, high immobilization efficiency, and uh, they are especially good for uh, separation and pre-concentration of trace analytes. But you know that their these uh, properties, they could be used different areas, including uh, uh, physical science and others. Uh, here, uh, a good ex uh, example, uh, also we have uh, some works with Dr. Mithat Ibrahim and his groups also with uh, carbon nanot nanotubes. Uh, in the usage of carbon nanotubes, uh, different proposals, different kinds of uh, combination is possible. Here is an example, a polypyrrole multivalve carbon nanotube for the salt phase extraction of lead from uh, water samples, uh, published in Talanta, which is a good journal for analytical chemists. Especially, especially this is uh, before uh, this, before usage of these materials, the characterization uh, is very important, and this material is characterized by using different uh, techniques, including SEM scanning electron microscope techniques, XRD techniques, FDR techniques, and others. After uh, characterization. We use these techniques, uh, these materials for the salt phase extraction of lead. In the uh, preparation of new materials, new composites, we are using generally uh, solvothermal <laughs> processes. We call these processes when our solvent is water, hydrothermal uh, processes. Uh, this is a, a, a good choice for the preparation of new materials uh, by the effects of pressure and temperature in a Teflon pump. Uh, we can easily uh, synthesize new uh, nanostructure. Uh, uh, also, uh, different kinds of materials from uh, 1D, 2D, 3D materials to polymers and quantum dots and uh, hybrid materials, we can easily synthesize. 
This is the uh, uh, simple uh, pictures of uh, our uh, system, our Teflon bump. Uh, this is uh, the uh, how we can prepare our salt regions here, our solvents, and also it closed by then heating uh, with uh, uh, after heating at high pressure, we can easily synthesize our uh, our materials. Also, here is an uh, example, a uh, hybrid materials, uh, copper two, copper one and copper two oxides, uh, multi-volt carbon nanotube hybrid. Uh, we use this materials for the uh, salt phase extraction of, salt phase extraction of uh, uranium at trace levels in water and uh, other uh, environmental samples prior to their inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometric uh, detection. Uh, another material, uh, everyone knows that, every scientist knows that uh, a good material is graphene. It has also uh, a very uh, good material for the different sciences of uh, different part of sciences and they call as the wonder material uh, also due to their very attractive uh, properties for example mechanical electrical uh, properties thermal properties and other properties and uh, it is, it could be used different uh, parts of uh, science, including energy, uh, biomedical application, environmental sciences in the sun nation. And also we are used these materials and uh, hybrid of these materials on the solid phase extraction of uh, Trace analyze. Here is an example uh, for the uh, magnetic salt phase extraction of copper from uh, some food samples and water samples. Uh, after impregnation, a suitable ligand. Here is a pyrocatechol violet. We could easily absorb copper to on the surface of these materials. Then uh, we applied this methodology for the salt phase extraction of copper uh, from uh, water samples. Also, another application of these materials is uh, a hybrid material, which is magnetic alanamine, alilamine modified graphene oxide plus polyvinyl acetate, covinyl, divinyl, benzene, co, uh, nanocomposite. We synthesized these materials. Then after characterization, uh, we use these materials for the uh, salt phase extraction of some metal ions. Uh, another application of uh, hydrothermal synthesis uh, or uh, for the fabrication and uh, characterization of uh, magnesium cobaltate. Uh, we uh, use these materials uh, after characterization for the salt phase extraction of uh, lead from uh, environmental samples. Uh, also, uh, we have new materials, including carbon nanotopes, nanodots. You know that also uh, nanodots are, uh, quantum dots are very attractive materials. We synthesize uh, magnetic carbon nanodots and graphene uh, oxide hybrid by using uh, hydrothermal synthesis and uh, we use these materials for the uh, salt phase extraction of ibuprofen in human blood uh, priority 
high performance liquid chromatographic detection of these uh, trace analytes. Uh, also, another application, another uh, sample for carbon nanodots, uh, cadmium selenite and carbon nanodots modified magnetic nano shares for the salt phase extraction of malahit green from uh, spectrophotometric determination of uh, it. Uh, another uh, attractive materials we used for the salt phase extraction studies, nano flowers. Uh, here, uh, some examples you can see some image, some images of uh, nano uh, flowers. They are uh, different kinds of nano flowers we can uh, synthesize. Uh, here is an uh, our uh, nano flowers. It is the same image of these materials. We uh, prepared it from uh, copper uh, two and phosphate two plus bovine serum albumin, and we use these materials for the uh, phase extraction of uh, cadmium and lead ions from different materials. Another uh, example of uh, nanoflowers, it is a inorganic nanoflowers. Uh, we synthesized the uh, These materials, these materials, uh, and characterized, characterized uh, by using some filter uh, XRD and other techniques. Then we use these nano flowers for the uh, salt phase extraction led from different uh, method, different samples. Uh, also. Uh, uh, Nowadays, we are focused on uh, metal organic frameworks. Uh, they are new generation materials. Many scientists use the uh, synthesized these materials, and many scientists use these materials for different properties. The synthesized these materials is very uh, attractive. Also, here you can see different methodology is possible. Uh, also, we our methodology, solver thermal methodology, uh, is possible for the uh, synthesized uh, metal organic frameworks. And also, uh, we can uh, use scientists use these materials. Uh, due to their high surface area, high porosity, to enable topography, crystallography, electronic and uh, optical properties with different application. Here are proposed separation and purification or different uh, usage of uh, these materials is possible. The gas and, and energy storage, drug delivery, Inshallah, we are uh, working on this uh, subject, drug delivery. Next year's, uh, I can give some example about these points and waste disposal, catalyzers, synthesizers, and different uh, working area is possible. Uh, nowadays, we are using uh, these materials for the salt phase extraction uh, of uh, trace metals and trace organic spaces because of uh, they have good adsorption uh, mechanism and adsorption uh, interactions. Why? Because uh, different uh, different uh, points are possible uh, for adsorption diffusion. Ion exchange, electro inter electrostatic interactions, Van der Waals forces, hydrogen bonding, uh, Navis spaces, shellation, coordination, and others. And also, uh, why they are uh, used for these purposes? 
because low toxic, low toxic metals uses uh, less harmful organic ligands uh, by the using in the synthesis of uh, metal organic frameworks. Uh, they are water uh, stable, high absorption capacity they have because of their surface area very high and uh, stability in sample and uh, media conditions is good and also uh, high thermal stability they have adequate uh, for mechanical stability and others. And also uh, different methodology is possible for the salt phase extraction of trace species by using uh, metal organic frameworks. Uh, this is uh, one part is magnetic salt phase extraction, other is dispersed salt phase extraction. Uh, what is the difference between them? Uh, in the magnetic salt phase extraction, uh, your uh, adsorbent should be magnetic properties and uh, adsorbent could be easily separate from the aqueous solution by using a magnet and uh, also after desorption you can easily uh, separate your adsorbent from the uh, eluent solution uh, by using a magnet but uh, in the dispersive salt phase extraction studies uh, the separation is generally uh, by using centrifugation and filtration because of your adsorbent has not magnetic properties. Uh, both of them could be used for these purposes. Uh, and also, only metal organic form waste could be used uh, for salt phase extraction, but uh, nowadays also uh, metal organic frameworks, hybrids with uh, prepared different methodology could be used for these purposes. For example, uh, covalent modification on metal modes on by using ligands or others is uh, other uh, preparation methodology is possible. Uh, here also uh, usage of these kinds of materials, these kinds of hybrids, for example, covalent organic frameworks on uh, metal organic frameworks or metal organic frameworks on covalent organic frameworks could be used different purposes from photocatalyzers, homogen heterogeneous catalysis, and uh, separation and absorption studies, which is our proposals. Also, others is possible. Uh, here is a uh, uh, preparation step for uh, uh, metal organic frameworks uh, combination with uh, copper and uh, this uh, ligand. And uh, this is the structure of our materials then using uh, these materials uh, uh, for the salt phase extraction studies. And also, I want to give some examples about uh, this uh, methodology uh, by using, used in our laboratory. Here is an, uh, one of my Egyptian students, Mohamed Habila, who worked, who is associate professor at uh, King South University. Our uh, collaborative work with uh, RGS University and King South University. Uh, this is the uh, solid phase extraction of carbonyl pesticides from food and water samples by using uh, a commercial uh, metal organic framework uh, and also prior to its determination step uh, ultra performance liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry. Another uh, work is uh, micro extraction of malathion uh, from uh, water and uh, soil samples uh, by using uh, metal organic frame works. Uh, here is then uh, a review uh, we published in Trent in Analytical Chemistry. Uh, 
for the usage of metal organic frameworks on the uh, solid phase extraction of uh, toxic metals from food and environmental samples. Also, we have some works uh, under review. Uh, for example, here, uh, vortex assisted solid phase micro extraction of parabens from waters by using uh, nil 101 uh, magnetic organic frameworks. Another one is uh, ion liquid supported metal organic frameworks for the solid phase extraction of illicit drugs from water samples. This is a, a collaborative work with a Ege University at Izmir in Turkey. And also, <coughs> uh, now in future, what we will work, we are working on quantum dots in solid phase extraction. Uh, our uh, metal organic frameworks studies are continue and also new materials, co covalent organic frameworks we are working and uh, nano extraction and salt phase nano extraction. We have, we are started this kinds of works and we are using nano engines, nano membranes and uh, micro motors, nano motors for the drug delivery. Uh, we have some uh, new uh, studies, inshallah, I will present in future for these kinds of uh, studies. And uh, I have some thanks at the end, uh, especially again, my thanks to uh, Dr. Metat Ibrahim, Dr. Hanan, and uh, also all the organizing committee of this conference, all of my friends at Egypt, uh, all of my students at Egypt, and also, uh, Thank you very much for National Council uh, of uh, uh, your institute. And also I am a member of Turkish Academy of Science. I want to thank them to their supports. Also, I want to thank TÜBİTAK, which is the Scientific and Technological uh, Research Council of Turkey. And I want to thank uh, to uh, AGS University, uh, for their very kind supports my university. And I want to thank to all of my uh, working group, all of my colleagues, all of my students. Uh, this is a working group works and this is their, they are very important for me and I want to thank all of them. And <laughs> lastly, I want to thank all of you for listening. Thank you very much. You are all welcome, uh, respected teachers uh, and my friends. I am Nebiye Kızıl. Uh, thank you all uh, for coming today. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to thank you uh, to the uh, conference uh, organizers. Uh, I am glad to be here uh, with you today. Uh, today, I will present uh, our new uh, paper uh, it's about uh, synthesis of magnetic multivolt carbon nanotubes uh, with zinc oxide uh, magnetic nanocomposite for magnetic solid phase extraction of rhodamine B in cosmetic, candy, water, and plastic samples. First of all, uh, I would like to outline uh, my presentation. Uh, it consists of uh, introduction, uh, three parts. Uh, first one is introduction, uh, second one 
experimental, and last one is results and discussion. In the beginning, uh, I would like to uh, start introduction part. Uh, my, uh, I, will tell, I will tell you, uh, Rodamin B uh, is my uh, analyte. It is, uh, it is a basic dye uh, of the Xanten dye class. Uh, it causes uh, dangerous diseases uh, such as chronic toxicity, uh, neurotoxicity, and skin uh, irritations. Due to uh, harmful effects, uh, both separation and analysis of rhodamine B uh, in real sample uh, samples is important. Uh, uh, it's very important. Too many techniques uh, are used for this. Uh, for instance, uh, ion exchange, uh, flotation, and absorption. We investigated uh, in this paper uh, adsorption methods. Uh, for this purpose, many uh, materials, carbon containing materials, uh, such as graphene, uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, activated uh, carbon uh, are used. Carbon uh, nanotubes, we synthesize uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes uh, materials. Uh, it has high uh, electrical conductivity, uh, large surface area, uh, simple electron transfer, and good thermal steadiness. Uh, also, uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes have given uh, magnetic properties uh, in this study. Uh, for this, uh, for quite uh, the time-consuming uh, and uh, preventing immense material loss. Uh, this is experimental uh, part. Uh, firstly, we synthesized uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes with zinc oxide nanomaterial. Uh, zinc chloride and sodium hydroxide uh, and uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes uh, were mixed in uh, ultrasonic bed uh, for about uh, 30 minutes. Then uh, transfer into hydrothermal uh, unit uh, and heated to uh, 180 uh, centigrade degrees for 12 hours. Uh, after this, nanomaterials uh, was obtained and washed uh, twice with uh, pure water, uh, acetone, and dry uh, oven, uh, 60 centigrade degrees. Then uh, we synthesized uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes, uh, magnetic multivolt uh, carbon nanotubes with uh, zinc oxide. Uh, in order to this, uh, iron uh, three chloride uh, and uh, iron uh, two chloride uh, added slowly uh, nanomaterials, obtained nanomaterials. Uh, after one hour uh, mixing at for reaction uh, 85 uh, centigrade degrees. Uh, then the uh, mixture was uh, cooled and washed water and acetone. Uh, finally, in uh, dried in an oven at 60 uh, centigrade degree. This is our uh, procedure, uh, magnetic solid phase extraction procedure. Uh, 10 milliliter model solution, uh, which include rhodamine B uh, buffer solution uh, in pH 3 was prepared firstly. After that, uh, 10 milligram uh, adsorbent was uh, added in it. Uh, this model solution was mixed via uh, vortex mixer, uh, mixer uh, for three minutes for adsorption. Uh, finally, 
uh, deception uh, studies were done uh, using 0.7 milliliter ethanol. Uh, ethanol was containing uh, rhodamine B uh, and uh, analyzed by UV visible uh, spectrophotometer at 558 nanometer. Result and discussion. Uh, firstly, we uh, characterized our adsorbent. Uh, we can see uh, FE uh, SAM images. Uh, it's clearly from figure E uh, understood that uh, zinc oxide particles uh, all around. Uh, figure B shows uh, morpho morphological structure uh, magnetic nanospheres with diverse size can be seen. Uh, this is and this is figure two, uh, the XRD pattern. Uh, figure show that the X, uh, XRD pattern uh, of the synthesized nanomaterials uh, showed diffraction peaks of both uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes. Uh, zinc oxide uh, and magnetic uh, magnetic nanomaterials uh, peaks. This is uh, figure three uh, FTR spectrum uh, our nanomaterials. Uh, FTR spectrum of the synthesized materials is given in figure three. Uh, both spectres affirmed. Uh, the presence of zinc oxide uh, nanomaterials and uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes. Uh, multivolt carbon nanotubes nanomaterials showed a significant vibration. Uh, multivolt carbon uh, nanotubes and uh, zinc oxide, iron and oxygen uh, showed a significant vibration band. Now uh, we optimize uh, our uh, paper. Uh, for this, uh, we uh, have tried to occur uh, optimal uh, pH uh, because pH is one of the most important uh, parameters. Uh, for this sample solution, uh, pH were adjusted uh, from uh, 2 and 8. Uh, optimal working pH was chosen as three. Uh, that's why a uh, follow-up uh, experiment had been uh, carried out at pH three. Now uh, we uh, investigated the uh, effect of uh, amount of uh, nanomaterials uh, for this by, uh, by adding in the range of uh, 5 and uh, 40 milligram uh, to the model solutions. Uh, maximum uh, extraction efficiency was obtained uh, 10 milligram. Eluent type. Uh, many solvents like acetone, acetonatrile, ethanol and water uh, were used. Uh, quantitative recovery results were obtained uh, with acetonitrile, uh, ethanol, and acetone. Maximum recovery values were reached with ethanol 0.7 milliliter we used. Effect of contact time. Uh, we use our uh, paper, our uh, study, uh, vortex mixer. Uh, this study for uh, adsorption and desorption studies. Uh, firstly, uh, model solutions were mixed uh, in the range of two and uh, seven minutes by using a vortex mixer uh, to investigate effect of contact time. Uh, optimum contact time was uh, chosen uh, as three minutes. Then uh, we uh, investigated uh, desorption studies. Uh, 
models uh, solution uh, was shaped for uh, in the range of uh, two and ten minutes. Uh, the results were uh, were illustrated uh, in Figure Seven. Uh, optimum desorption time uh, was chosen two minutes. Sample volume. Finding a uh, highest uh, sample volume uh, model solution uh, prepared in the range of 5 and uh, 60 milliliter. Quantum uh, quantitative recovery values uh, were obtained until uh, 50 milliliters. Since uh, final volume use uh, is 0.7 milliliter, uh, the concentration factor was calculated as 71.4 we obtained pre-concentration factor. Matrix effects. Uh, to evaluate uh, selectivity of method, uh, some organic and uh, inorganic ionic uh, bases uh, like sodium, cadmium, methylene blue, uh, eosin B, uh, was added our uh, sample solutions. We can see from the table one uh, method show high selectivity in the matrix medials. Now uh, to evaluate uh, the accuracy uh, of method. Uh, it was applied at light uh, cosmetic, uh, candy, plastic, paper samples. Uh, also, and uh, addition and recovery uh, studies were done uh, for uh, checking accuracy. Uh, the results uh, proven that we could uh, apply method high accuracy and good sensitivity like this addition uh, and recovery uh, experiment uh, were shown in table three. Now, uh, finally, uh, analytical performance uh, criticals were calculated, uh, like limit of quantification, limit of detection, uh, correlation coefficient, uh, relative standard deviation, uh, linear equation for calibration curve. Uh, we achieve, uh, we can see from the table, uh, we achieve uh, low limit and quantification and limit of detection. Uh, and thank you for attention. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to thank you my supervisor uh, Doctor of uh, Professor Mustafa Soylak uh, and Soylak Research Group. Thank you. Hi, my name is Furkan Uzcan. I am working at Erciyes University. My presentation title is An Innovative Zinc Dot Molybdenum Oxide Nanorods for Solid Fast Micro Extraction and determination of lead in food and water samples combined with high resolution continuous source atomic absorption spectrometry. First, I want to talk about toxic heavy metals. The term heavy metal refers to any metallic element that has relatively high density and it is toxic or poisonous at very low concentrations. Toxic heavy metals found naturally free in earth. Urbanization and industrialization have caused pollution of toxic metals. By human activities, toxic metals enter in human tissues, plants, and animals. Metal toxicity depends upon the absorbent dose brought of exposure and duration of exposure. 
it can be separate to two acute and chronic exposure. What about symptoms of toxic uh, metals? Uh, we can say abdominal pain, headache, skin problems, irritability, loss of appetite, high blood pressure, memory loss, anemia, aggressive behavior, and so on. Let exposure to high levels of lead may cause anemia, weakness, kidney, and brain damage. Very high lead exposure can cause death. Even low level lead exposures in developing babies have been found to affect behavior and intelligence. Lead exposure can cause miscarriage, stillbirths, and infertility in both men and women. Solid phase micro extraction is a sample preparation technique which uses small amounts of extraction phases and adsorbents for the extraction of target analytes. Solid phase micro extraction used to detect metals at traceable level which couldn't be determined by simple analytical techniques usually. Solid phase micro extraction is inter integrating several operations such as sample collection, extraction, analyte enrichment, and isolation from sample matrices. It has been used to extract analytes from liquids and solid samples. What is advantages of solid phase micro extraction? It uses low amounts of sorbents. It needs short extraction time. High sensitivity and environmental friendly technique. In this study, a solid phase micro extraction method using zinc dot molybdenum oxide absorbent was developed for the separation, enrichment, and determination of trace lead. The measurements were made with a high resolution continuum source atomic absorption spectrometer. By using buffer solutions, model solution medium was adjusted to different pH values and the optimal pH was found. After pH was optimized, many parameters such as absorbent amount, alum type and volume, extraction time, and model solution volume were optimized. Matrix effects also optimized. The method was used for lead content of various elemental samples after validation with certified reference materials and addition recovery studies. Results. As you can see in the figures, the first figure is pH optimization. Uh, we studied between 2 to 8 pH. Uh, the quantitative recoveries we get at pH 5. So we selected pH 5 for further work. Next figure is absorbent amount. We used absorbent amount between 10 mg to 3 mg, uh, 30 mg. So uh, all levels we studied, we get quantitative recovery. So we used 10 mg absorbent zinc dot molybdenum oxide for further work. Next figure is alum concentration. We used nitric acid as an alum 
between 0.5 molar to 3 molar. As you see, all concentrations we used, we get quantitative recovery. So we use 0.5 molar nitric acid for the rest of the work. Next figure is alert volume. After optimization of the concentration of nitric acid, we optimized alert volume. We used 1 to 5 ml, 0 0.5 molar nitric acid. As you see on the figure, we used at 2 ml nitric acid quantitative recovery. So we choose 2 ml for further work. The next parameter is sample volume. As you see on the figure, we prepared our sample volumes, our samples between 10 ml to 50 ml. As you see on the table, above 20 ml, a decrease has occurred. So we use 20 ml sample volume. We prepared after this optimization parameter, 20 ml. The matrix effects also we studied. We add different cations and some onions at different concentrations separately. After that, we applied our method. As you can see on the table, uh, recoveries we get above 90%. So we can say that our method is selected to let analytical characteristics are, as you see on the table, low levels, limit of direction and limit of quantification, we get. For validation of the method, we use two materials, two certified reference materials. First one is fortified water sample and second one is tobacco leaves. As you see on the table, recovery is, is quantitatively we get. And also for validation of the method, we used water samples in two level concentration. As you see on the table, the results are quantitatively we get. Then after we validate our method, we applied our method some water samples, oil samples, and tea samples. As you see, you can see results on the table. As a conclusion, in this study, a solid phase microextraction method in which selective zinc, zinc dot molecular oxide material is used as an absorbent was developed for the separation enrichment and determination of tracelet from the food and water matrices. After all parameters of the method were optimized, the validation of the method was made with certified reference materials and addition recovery studies. The presented method showed selectivity towards that and it was shown that the method could be used for determination of trace lead in several water and food samples. Thank you for your listening. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Özgür uh, from Turkey and city of name Kayseri. Uh, firstly, thank you for listening our presentation. I will share with you for presentation. Uh, first of all, our subject 
or this uh, experimental switchable hydrophilicity solvent based liquid liquid micro extraction of palladium from environmental sample. Uh, our groups, uh, my name is Özgür and Dr. Mansur Han and Dr. Mustafa Soylak. Uh, he is my supervisor and Dr. Mansur, uh, he is my uh, group, uh, lab group friends. And firstly, uh, search, say search of heavy metals in environment. Uh, heavy metals divided to area. Uh, firstly, left side natural search, and right side anthropogenic uh, search. First of all, natural search for uh, rocks, volcanic eruption, forest, and for air resort overseas. And second divide for anthropogenic search. Uh, uh, you can see organic and inorganic fertilizers, sewage sludge, fossil, and for industrial process. And then uh, for this experimental, uh, our analyte palladium. You can see for palladium very hazardous and palladium for car uh, carcinogenic and for toxic. But uh, people using for industrial materials, for example, chemical catalysis, medical, metallurgy, and electrical applica application. Uh, but however, some palladium compounds are considered to be carcinogenic and their effect increase with the food chain. Uh, therefore, the accurate and price quantification of trace palladium in different samples of great importance. And for uh, analysis of palladium, uh, different type of analytical instrument. You can see for left side ICP OS, optic emission spectroscopy, and uh, for under atomic absorption spectroscopy. Uh, it is less suitable because needing uh, for experts and very expensive and very difficult and for uh, for time consuming but site le uh, site left for more suitable uh, it is for UV visible spectrophotometer because not need expert and for not need uh, any guess and for not toxic and economical, uh, we used this uh, analytical instrumentation, uh, its name, uh, UV visible spectrophotometer for analysis of palladium and PADAP complexing. Uh, however, uh, this ICP optic emission spectroscopy technique, I say again, uh, for expensive and require for laboratory arrangement for operation, and then other instrument, it is plain atomic absorption spectroscopy, choose in the analysis of palladium. Uh, it is simple and cost effective compared to ICP optic emission spectroscopy. And due to for trace palladium level and interference effects from complex matrix and quantification of palladium in real sample is not possible. Therefore, preconcentration of palladium to is necessary for quantification because preconcentration factor very important. Uh, some analytical techniques uh, needs for uh, sample uh, sample analysis for uh, signal, and if you're not using for preconcentration techniques, uh, you cannot see this signal, and you can must need uh, these uh, methods. Uh, therefore, preconcentration methods type of six or seven. Firstly, uh, for deprotectic solvents, dispersive liquid liquid micro extraction, and temperature control liquid liquid micro extraction, supramolecular, uh, supramolecular green liquid liquid micro extraction, and then uh, we can use for switchable solvent liquid liquid micro extraction. And uh, this. What is a uh, switchable polarity solvent? It's named green solvent. Why uh, we can use this procedure? Uh, firstly, we use uh, this starting for 
2005 years starting for the switchable solvents. The switchable solvents defined as a system in which uh, non-ionic liquids and uh, uh, this system uh, is uh, not toxic uh, and then for example this one uh, sorry for this uh, again i say the switchable solvents defined for system in a which a non-ionic liquid converts to an ionic liquids uh, hydrophilic and completely miscible with water under the presence of carbon dioxide and then reverts back to its non-ionic forms. Uh, hydrophobic and forms biphasic mixture when mixed with water. When the gas purged uh, from the solution, you can see this reaction, this red color. Uh, for example, this uh, it is for our experimental NN dimethyl butylamine and you can add carbon dioxide and for environment in water and then after reaction these amine chemicals protonated and then uh, bicarbonate uh, for ob uh, obtain it is hydrophobic and then if you can add carbon dioxide and then this protonated amine it is hydrophilic it is convert to four polarity change of polarity and you can see this figure uh, contain two forms it is for hydrophobic solvent and water and uh, for switchable uh, reaction starting it is hydrophobic and then convert hydrophilic solvent if you cannot use for search of carbon dioxide this reaction not completely and uh, the polar form, non-polar form, this one, and uh, this lastly, uh, you can obtain hydrophilic solvent. It's switchable solvent method, simple, fast, and reversible, and uh, most important, control. Uh, it is manner. And the, the switchable solvent are based on apolar, secondary, tertiary amines, forming for protonated amine bicarbonate or alkyl carbonate salts with the water in the presence of carbon dioxide and one atmosphere pressure and you can see this one it is hydrophilicity very low and then hydrophilicity hydrophilicity it is normal and when it contains oil it is hydrophobicity very high and if you can add carbon dioxide it is for this oil and uh, from hydrophilicity to hydrophobicity converts and this you can see for protonated amine we can use for anandimethyl butylamine and uh, if this nitrogen gas and or air is passed through this switchable solvent medium it is in a polar form if this solvent is heated if a base of si if you can add after hydrophilicity, if you add uh, sodium hydroxide, this pH very high, and then starting for hydrophilic hydrophobicity and change of polarity, and your for palladium and other heavy metals and other for organic pollutions or in inorganic pollutions extraction of uh, for upper phase. Uh, if you cannot aid for polarity change, uh, not extraction, good. And then you can see for synthesize and polar polar form switchable solvent formation mechanism. In the presence of carbon dioxide, this one, it is for normal, I mean, chemicals and carbon dioxide for environmental. If you can add carbon dioxide, it's protonated and bicarbonate, you can this. If you cannot using carbon dioxide, uh, you can use for uh, nitrogen gas, air or heating solution, and we can use this sodium hydroxide or hydrochloric acid. Options, you can have five options. And for switchable solvent liquid liquid micro extraction base, this one, 
For advantage, it is rapid, inexpensive, high energy mode factor, high rep repeatability, and the low uh, volatility, good cleanup, and reduce the analysis time. You can see these figures. Uh, this left side contain for amine chemicals, I mean for solvents. If you can add options five, for example, dry ice or bicarbonate, it is uh, like this one, it's protonated amine, and this, and this, this, and four and five. You can see four type of different amines. For switchable solvent liquid, liquid micro extraction of palladium, uh, for experiment, experimental uh, preparation of switchable polarity solvent, and then other experimental for preconcentration studies. Uh, our experimental for synthesis of switchable, you can see uh, one cup contain, you can add 200 milliliter uh, water and 200 milliliter NND methyl butyl amine. For starting reaction, if you can add for carbon dioxide search, we use sodium uh, bicarbonate and our temperature 80 centigrade. And then lastly, obtain hydrophilic protonated NND methyl butyl amine carbonates, totally 400 milliliters. And then if change of polarity for starting hydrophilic and then lastly hydrophobic, if you can add sodium hydroxide, it is very high concentration, like approximately 10 molar, and starting for hydrophilic, and then lastly for hydrophobic. And for extraction yields, it is very high, for preconcentration, very high, lastly, and remove carbon dioxide. And it's a graph, our graphical abstract. For example, firstly, you can have falcon tubes and you add water, palladium, and this buffer, pH 6. And then you can add for extraction yield increase, you can use for complexing agent, this name PADAP. And then for palladium PADAP complexing, you can see maybe two minutes. After two minutes, complexing completely uh, starting. And for approximately one minute vortex and five minutes centrifugation, and for uh, remove extraction phase, and separately uh, remove for water, and then lastly you can add methanol, and for giving spectrophotometric determination, it is for use analysis of palladium PADAP complex. Lastly. And then optimization studies, firstly, from two and to nine, uh, scanning for pH and optimum pH for our pH six. And then second op optimization for amount of PADAP, this ligand, uh, from two, uh, from two and two twenty. And we can check and optimum PADAP amount, it is 12 micrograms. And then for third optimization, it's a volume of 10 molar sodium hydroxide for hydro hydrophobic uh, solvent. Uh, we, uh, for targets, 1.75 milliliters. And then last, uh, for extraction so uh, solution, from 0 .0 0.25 to um, 2 milliliters, we can used 1.25 milliliter for extraction solution. This name switchable solvent. It is named for protonated uh, NN dimethyl butylamine carbonate. And then for last uh, optimization parameters, effect of coextinking co and interference. For matrix ion, you can see cations. And for lastly, anions, it contain most of all uh, heavy metals, other heavy metals for racing. It's uh, amount added for microgram, it is for salts, it is compound, compound. And then lastly for recovery and standard deviation, increase to uh, 94 and like uh, hundreds recovery. It is for us best uh, results. And then lastly, studies to be contact, conducted and for validation, 
E, for future times, we can use certified reference material for real sample application, food, and for catalytic converter and others uh, water, industrial water and other waters we can use. And then lastly, standard addition method for addition recovery. We can check. And inshallah. And thank you for listening. Uh, thank you.